Have you been wondering what robots you should buy for your elementary STEM space? In this episode, I will be giving my recommendations for the best robots that you should invest in for your elementary classroom. When it comes to purchasing robots for the classroom, it doesn't have to be super scary and you really don't have to buy everything at once. All of the robots that I'm going to be talking about, I am not sponsored currently by any of these companies, but of course, if you're watching this and you work for those companies, let me know because I would love to chat. But these are robots that I have used in my elementary STEM space that have definitely been worth the investment and that I could use with hundreds of students for a variety of different lessons. All of these robots have different coding languages. There are some similarities and differences that we will talk about. So again, these are things that I have used with kids and that have worked well over the years. The first robot that I would recommend to use in your STEM space is the Dash Robot by Wonder Workshop. It is a teal robot that has a round head and then three round parts at the bottom with two wheels. And there are different pieces to attach different accessories. This robot is recommended for K through five, which you can definitely use with all of your students, which is a great investment because then if you don't have a whole lot in your budget, you have a robot that you can use with all of your students. I talked a lot about Dash and just Wonder Workshop in general with Brian Miller, who works for the company, and make sure to go check that out back in episode 32. At the time of this episode, they're about $180 per robot, which is slightly pricey, but again, it can be used with all of your students, so it's worth the investment. When you're using this with the younger students, there are apps that really help the students understand how the robot works in a more simple coding language. And then when you move into the second through fifth graders, there is an app where you can use block-based coding to get more into that higher level coding. This robot is super durable and easy to get started with. You just unbox it, turn it on, push through any updates, and you are ready to go. Dash has a rechargeable battery that you can use their power cord, so and the battery lasts for a long time. So if you're using this with multiple classes throughout the day, you might just have to charge Dash in the middle of the day, and you should be good to go the whole entire day. What's really awesome, too, is you can code Dash with not only with tablets, but also with Chromebook, so with the web browser. As long as the device has Bluetooth, you can code Dash, which is awesome because I know not all of us have tablets in our classrooms, so you don't have to be limited to that option. Like I mentioned, there are parts to Dash where you can attach various accessories that are available to purchase separately. There's also these really cool, simple attachments that you can put on Dash, and students can actually build with Lego bricks to help them solve their solution. Not only that, Wonder Workshop has an annual competition that you can do as an after school club and use this robot and they have various challenges that you can have students problem solve and collaborate together. The challenges and themes change every year to keep your students excited and engaged year after year. So I definitely recommend that as an after school club opportunity. Again, this robot is so amazing. It rolls, it can make sound, it can perform different actions with those accessories. So again, if you only are able to purchase one type of robot, this guy, Dash, could be your go-to. You may notice there are other robots that Winter Workshop offers. They have Dot, which is a smaller robot that doesn't move, but can interact with Dash. And then they have Q, the older sibling that we like to say, that they can interact as well and can perform multiple coding actions that Dash can't currently do. But you don't need either one of these robots, you can. Dash is just fine, and if you get about six to 12 of these for your classroom, you will be set up. When you're first getting started with Dash, they have some coding cards that are excellent for learning the basics of Dash. There are these mini challenges that students can complete and work with groups. I love using these when I first get Dash out with my students and they have no prior background when using these robots. They are perfect challenges that students can progress through, and it teaches them how to use the coding language and to see how Dash responds when the different coding actions are performed. The second robot that I would recommend for the elementary classroom is the Spiro robot. There are a lot of different variations of these offered by Spiro. There is the Spiro Mini that is the size of a golf ball. There is the Spiro Bolt. There's the Spiro Spark Plus. There are a lot of different 
variations. They all do about the same thing. So you could always try to purchase the newest version that they have out at the time. But this robot is shaped like a ball and it rolls like a ball. They move very, very fast. So different than Dash where Dash has wheels on the bottom, Spiro rolls around, but it has a very similar coding language. I will say a big difference between the coding of Spiro and Dash is that Spiro can perform more tight turns and angles. So when you have more obstacle courses or things that have corners and turns, Spiro might be the best robot for this. Dash has a bit more of a personality. It's cuter, I would say. Um, so students really connect with that, that it has a personality. But again, robots are things that perform an automated task. So it's really awesome that these companies have different robots and they look different. Some look like they have a personality, some don't. But either way, that's okay. The goal is to teach students that it's performing an automated task that you code it to do. There are a lot of different apps that you can use for Spiro. The one that I like to use is the Spiro Education app, and the coding is a bit more complicated. So if you're looking for a next challenge for students, I would recommend using Spiro with your older students, fourth, fifth, even sixth grade, because the coding can be even more complicated. You can talk about the speed and rate of things, again, those lines and angles. So you can even have this very specific degrees, which Dash can too. But the way that you can code Spiro can get even more complicated, which is great for students who want more of a challenge. There are other offshoots of Spiro that also I would recommend looking into for your classroom. There is the Spiro Rover. It's not spelled Rover, it's R-V-R, but this is recommended for even the higher upgrades, so sixth grade and beyond. So if you're a teacher who teaches K through eight, this would be a great investment for you because they would, students would be used to the block-based coding like with the Spiro, the ball Spiro, but there is just more of a challenge when it comes to the coding and the capabilities of that robot. And it looks like a little car. So that is pretty exciting as well. Likewise, there is a younger student offshoot, the Spiro Indy, which I talked about in the holiday episode, things to buy for your classroom. And this one's really cool too, because this robot reads the color codes on the cards. So you don't necessarily need a device to code that robot, but it reads the cards and then students can put the cards in a different formation on the ground. And then when that robot drives across those colors, then it will perform the action. So there's a whole line of variations. So if you have more room in your budget, I would mix this type of robot in, especially if you teach all the students in the school. It is pretty cool to have a variety of robots for students to experiment with, because if you're using the same one year after year, they might master that type of coding. Then you definitely want to mix up the lessons that you're doing. So again, if you have more room in your budget, mix these robots in so you have more variety and students can compare and contrast the type of coding and the different challenges that they'll perform in your classroom. The third best robots to use for students in the elementary classroom are robots that use directional coding. There are a lot of options for this type of coding. When I am describing directional coding, that would be the coding that uses the arrows. So this is definitely used for primary students or pre-readers where there's an arrow that shows the direction the robot is going to be moving. These robots definitely are cute. They have a lot of personality and there are a lot of different options out there. And I'm gonna describe the difference between those to help you with your purchasing decision because all of their coding languages are pretty much the same thing with the arrows, but here's the differences between those robots. The cheapest option is the Code and Go mouse. It's about the size of your fist. It doesn't use a screen but it does use batteries that you have to replace. It's not a rechargeable robot. They are the cheapest, so if you really, really are on a tight budget, this is the cheapest option to go to. Now, I will say the coding is great, but if you're using this for hundreds of students, they don't really last a long time, and they come up with some weird little issues and kinks where it might go the opposite direction, the wheels don't always work, so if you're looking for a longevity of a product, I wouldn't really recommend the Code & Co mouse. Love the coding, super simple to use. You could just buy the robot. You don't need the whole kit that has 
the squares that come with it. They're these green squares that students can build on. You don't really need those. The robot is awesome if you're on a tight budget. If you're a classroom teacher, let's say you only teach about 25 to 30 kids, definitely invest in this code and go mouse. Or if you are a parent, perfect for at home. A robot that does the same exact thing that is more durable and you don't have to replace the batteries are the B-Bots. Yes, they are pricier, but they are extremely durable and hardly ever have any issues. I've had the same ones for years and I know that they were in my classroom even before I got this job and they were used for years before that. So they are definitely worth the investment. If you can splurge a little bit more, this is the top one that I would recommend for primary students and it is the blue bot. The blue bot, again, also has the arrows that you press on the robot, the directional coding. It's see-through, so it looks just like the B-Bot, but it's see-through. It's kind of a bluish tint, so students can see inside of the robot and what all of its components are. But not only does it have the screen-free option, it does have the option of being able to be coded by using an iPad. This is a great progressive robot, meaning students can start off in kindergarten, first grade, coding by using the arrow keys on the back of the robot, and then at the end of first grade or beginning second grade, they can code the robot using a tablet connected with Bluetooth, and they can code using the arrows on the iPad, but you can also code using block-based coding that is even more simple than the Dash robot, which I love because if you have a variety of robots, then this type of coding with the blue bot will help them with the Dash robot. And then let's say you have the Sphero, the ball one, then if they can master Dash, then they can go with Spiro. So like I said, I love having a variety of robots in my classroom to have that progression of learning. So when we, I'm teaching robotics, we're all doing robots at the same time, and we are interacting with robots where there is that progression of learning, and there's different challenges along the way, and students can explore different coding languages and things that are exciting for them. So that's why I like having that variety. There's also another robot that uses directional coding and that is the Botley robot. There are two versions, there's the Botley and then there's the 2.0 where there's just more capabilities with the Botley, the 2.0. It basically does the same thing. Instead of having the arrows on the back of the robot, there is a little remote. Now again, it's a really great robot, not as durable as the B-Bot with a ton of hands. Just be careful that the remote doesn't get lost. I haven't used a bunch of these with a whole class. I've used this before, just one robot with a station. So I'm not sure when it comes to the remote, if the remote can control all of the bot leaves in the room or just the one that it comes with in the kit. Like I said, try it out. If you know, let me know. <laughs> but this one is a cheaper option. It's a little more expensive than the Code Go mouse, but cheaper than the Blue Bot and B Bot. It can do a little bit more than the Code Go mouse. It has a little bit more functions. So there's just a variety of price ranges when it comes to that directional coding. They all do the same thing, perfect for the same grade of students. But if I were to have to choose one, I would choose the Blue Bot. Robot. As a recap, here are the best robots for elementary students that I would recommend for your classroom. First, we have the Dash Robot by Wonder Workshop. Next are the different robots that are offered by Spiro. We have the Bolt, the Mini, which are both shaped like a ball that can roll around. There is the Rover RVR, and there is the Indy. And finally, there are the robots that use directional coding. So we talked about the variety of those. There's the B-Bot, the Blue Bot, the Code and Go Mouse, and Botley. I hope that this helps with your decision making when it comes to the robots to use in your classroom and what is available out there. We will talk more about specific lessons in future episodes, but I don't want you to be overwhelmed with all the decisions out there. These are ones that I have used with students or ones that I know people have used and that have worked well. So hopefully this can take out that decision fatigue and find a resource that will work best for your STEM space. 